Part 2, 30 plus out of place and out of time animals in the ancient Americas, etc. Uh, at this point, I realize in terms of technical expertise, it's going to neither be a great movie or a great slideshow, but we hope that there's some information uh, imparted that's of interest. Um, this is part two. Uh, part one is also available on YouTube, and both parts available on com slash WordPress, the blog, capital W, capital P, WordPress is one word. So moving on, this is the Granby Idol. Um, it's a 66-pound relic um, called pre-glacial pre in newspapers of the time, um, found in 1923 in the Rocky Mountains. Jean Allard Jean Cohn was one of the um, archaeologists, the first to take a look at it. And he, he, his quote is, I've never seen such remarkable outlines of dinosaurs and mastodons. That's because this pre-glacial rock of granite um, it was called unfakeable. Uh, for various reasons. Um, the article appears at uh, Saint.com WordPress 1832. But upon this rock, there's humans or a human. There's a seropod dinosaur and another d dinosaur described as a meat eating dinosaur on this rock. It's a very interesting piece. A lot of controversy about elephants in North America. If you Google elephants in North America, you're not going to come up with much. On a scientific basis, it's a non starter. But there have been numerous, uh, multiple indications in the form of artifacts and drawings, ancient line drawings in the North America that elephants um, lived in North America in relatively recent times. Uh, these are a few examples. Um, these are called elephant pipes, the two on the right, and a coin found with the drawing of an elephant in 1907. One of the reasons it's controversial, of course, is the Mormons, I guess, and uh, Joseph Smith's claim about elephants in North America. But he probably came upon numerous artifacts depicting elephants, and that's how he came to those conclusions that he did. And this on the left is a quadruped, quadruped dinosaur. It looks like a meat eater. And uh, typically, uh, skeptics will say, okay, because this is obviously a dinosaur depiction, but it's not real. It couldn't be real because they are quadrupeds, and we all know that dinosaurs, meat-eating dinosaurs, were bipedal, like Tyrannosaurus on the rex, on the right. Uh, Mr. Gaffney, in his 1990 book Dinosaurs, Eugene Gaffney, 1990 book Dinosaurs, points out that there are some who believe that the prosauropods um, were meat eaters or omnivores, ate meat and vegetables. And so maybe these ancient Tiwanakuans were ahead of the curve in knowing that there were meat-eating quadruped dinosaurs at their time, and they're depicted here. Um, on the right is a, to my mind, a Tyrannosaurus rex. You can't see the tail. It's compared to a toy Tyrannosaurus rex, and you can see that some of the facial features, the fact that it's bipedal depiction, and it's got the little hands, it makes it difficult to give some other any other identification than T. rex, other than the fact that science says it, it couldn't be a T. rex. Here in this left box here, um, the museum identifies this as a crocodile. As you can see, these objects, and this one's very similar to this, have too much height in perspective to be crocodile representations and also features other than crocodiles. Also, they depicted alligators and crocodiles quite realistically in other art of the same period. Um, so this shows a human, unfortunate human, in the mouth of this dinosaur depiction. This is a, um, other than, can't be anything other than a pterosaur, uh, depicted with the bat-like wings, a snake in his mouth. Um, and look at the feet. Uh, if you know anything about pterosaur feet versus bird feet, four toes parallel like that. That's most a pterosaur depiction. Here's a huge bird-like object um, attacking a person. These are clothes on this person. Um, and the, they're from Costa Rica. And this is a Costa Rican stone metate. Um, terror bird. You know, recently in the press, scientific press, there's been articles about um, the terror birds. The recent skulls uh, were found and identified. This is a drawing from a pictogra pictograph 
uh, it's an ancient Indian pictograph, or some might say a mound builder, but I noted, noted the, the close similarity between their depiction and that of the terror bird, which was supposedly extinct between 2 million and 62 million years ago. This is a ratite that appeared in the same drawing, well, in the same book. Um, and ratites are large uh, flightless birds like ostriches, um, emu, moa, and I threw this in for interest. Perhaps some large um, ratite was uh, also a denizen of North America in recent times. Ostriches only have two toes. This is clearly depicted with three toes, um, like a moa. Pterosaurs have three fingers and hands connected to their wings. Their fourth finger um, is elongated and forms a part of the wing surface or underneath the wing surface or embedded in the wing surface. Uh, this is a griffin from Pompeii, um, 100 BC, 200 BC. Pompeii it has some features of a pterosaur, but also common features to a griffin. You know, the griffin has been uh, a puzzle to scientists because it's depicted across many cultures with um, similar uh, characteristics, and that led Meyer to hypothesize that it was old fossils of, uh, of uh, dinosaurs that had led to this, the big dinosaur, Proceratops specifically, was what led to these similar depictions. And it's an interesting theory that various cultures would find the same fossil and come up with the same similar looking pterosaur featured creature. The three fingered hands, the wings that are between bat wings and um, bird wings that have acto fibers, actophil I believe it's called. These are feather like fibers in the, the strength in the wings. Uh, some pterosaurs had long tails ending in a flange, a diamond or rectangular shaped object that was weighted that was at the end of their tail that aided in flight. This is a mound builder version of the griffin. This is a Persian griffin from 500 BC. I uh, just want to go over a few pterosaur features again before we look at some other objects. They had teeth, most of them. Birds do not have teeth, any of them. Um, this is a skin stretched between two legs of some pterosaurs called the Europage Europatagium. And um, I want you to remember this shape uh, as we look at some of these uh, upcoming pictures. Classic griffin with a similar kind of a tail flange on his, on his um, tail with the curved beak and the ears and the uh, front hand. Uh, pterosaurs had a manis and a pest, and their hands were different than their feet. We talked about their three-fingered hands. Their feet were different. So griffins are described as having the front end of an eagle and the back end of a lion, and that is one of the reasons they have that feature. This is also the Europatagium on a pterosaur drawing. So mound builder artifact showing the curved beak and large ears of the griffin, typical of the griffin drawings. Again, this is our other mound builder artifact with the similar features. This is a Pueblo people, ancient Indian depiction of the Thunderbird with the curved beak and the ears and the Europatagium. This is the Europatagium stretched between the legs and the bat wings on a Costa Rican um, depiction with the curved beak and the ears. This is from Ur of Chaldees. And similar features on this lion-headed eagle, as it's called. It's a pendant. It's got the uh, Europatagium at the bottom there. This is from ancient Israel. It's a seal. You can see the beak the, the up ears, and here we have the tail flange, which is typical only of pterosaurs, and of course no birds whatsoever, and a similar, an object with similar features from Luristan, 600 BC. Just additional, this is a drawing of a, a modern drawing of a pterodactylus, and you know, there's different kinds of pterosaurs, so you might say the head does not match, but just the shape and how a pterosaur would walk on the ground compared to how a griffin is depicted. You can see it would have the front feet different than the, the rear end. You can see the wings curve up from their attachment on the ground to the, in the air. It's very similar. This is the mound builder depiction on a cup with the ears and the beak and the bat-like wings. And here's another one from Prehistoric America by Marquis de Nadalac, 1885. This is from 1892 book. This is 
a pterosaur because birds do not have fingers or hands. Pterosaurs have three fingered hands. And here is a pterosaur because pterosaurs have teeth. Birds do not have teeth. As you can see, the teeth are depicted on this pterosaur. Here's a close up of the hand did pterosaur. This is compared to pterodactylus. Just to show that there are pterosaurs with this head shape, there's a number of others, um, holding something to his mouth, getting ready to eat something a bird cannot do. This is also a curved beaked, um, I believe, pterosaur representation with the three fingered hands, the Eurypatagium, and these are as well from 500 AD, um, from the um, 11th century, the 16th century, Costa Rica, the other ones from Chiquiri. And I think this ends, oh, I'm sorry, it doesn't. <laughs> Got more. This is Zuni, uh, ancient Native American culture from their pottery. This could be nothing other than a pterosaur, if you look at it carefully in your objective, outstretched wings. Also wanted to point out that this um, attitude that this pterosaur has in flight is very common, uh, commonly depicted in ancient art. Rather than a parallel with, say, the face, um, facing the ground, the wings outspread parallel to the ground, the um, attitude they're often drawn on is this one with the wings uh, uh, perpendicular to the ground, the tail perpendicular to the ground, uh, and uh, a weight, their weighted tail hold, helping them to hold this attitude. It, may, it would seem to be difficult to fly parallel with this heavy wing um, hanging down. Also, this is the object that this is taken from. Uh, this is European version from uh, a medieval period from a book called The Light of the Past showing a flock of these um, items. And here's also a from the Zuni culture as well, uh, very closely depicting the shape of a pterosaur with a head, slight head crest. Thank you.